Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show, the Die Hat Show, Scott. We're the Die Hat Show. Huh? D-Y-H-A-T. Did you hear about this? Oh, I didn't know what. I thought there was something wrong with my hat. <laughs> no, just we changed the name for an experiment to Die Hat. Right? Did you see what I did on I Spotify? I did see that, yes. Yeah. Die Hat, the pop culture, new, whatever I named it. Just a, just an experiment. Just an experiment to see if it drives more uh, downloads. It did not. It didn't do a damn thing. But it was a fun thing to try. I'll probably turn it back. But I was reading it. I'm like, Die Hat. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Welcome <laughs> to Die Hat. There's too many acronyms in the world as it is. We don't need to be another acronym. Nah, we'll go back. So much for a, an experiment. It but, takes away from the impact of when we say, did you hear about this? That's People true. Like, yeah, it takes away from that. That's true. It's a bad call. I regretted it immediately, but I didn't do anything to change it back until, <laughs> <laughs> until I remembered I did it right now. Ah, well. You know, there's a cool thing with uh, Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is the company that hosts our podcast, and then Buzzsprout will send that feed to Spotify and Apple and all the millions out there. So Buzzsprout all of a sudden has this thing thing where you can text us i saw this yeah right from this show right from the show so if you're sitting in your car and you're at a stoplight and bill says something stupid you grab your phone you click the text us and i get it in my email okay all right so so before we got text messages we didn't even know we were getting through a, a whole different platform right what Weren't we getting emails that we had no idea we were getting emails for? Oh, yeah. That happened. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. But we know we get these. But now I know when, when these emails or texts come through because they go directly to my main email. All right. So a couple have come through, but they've been spam. And it made me laugh. I was like, I'm going to ask people to just send me something. Just text us something. Text us something funny. Text us a picture. I Maybe we'll read it. I see dick pics coming your way. I Okay. <laughs> At least I know you're there listening. There you go. <laughs> so go ahead. Use that text us uh, link and send us some funny shit. And maybe we'll talk about it next week. Let's see what we get. Careful what you wish for. I know. I'm, I'm very aware this could go off the rails. <laughs> you're banking on I'm it. I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, good to see you. I thought you were going to be at the shore. No, I didn't make it to the beach at all this. Like all the plans we had for a short beach weekend out the window. Fucking tropical storm Debbie Downer killed it for us. Well, I thought you were at the beach because you told me you saw Deadpool at the beach. No, I saw Deadpool, but not at the beach. Oh. No. What'd you think of it? Uh, out of 10, I'd give it a 7.8. Are we okay to talk about spoilers? You want to talk a little about Deadpool? I've been trying to have a Deadpool conversation with you since I saw it last Sunday. And you said, oh, save it for the air. Save it for the air. You're like, let's do a show right now. And I was like, let's do a show right fucking now. I need to talk about this. No, I didn't say let's do a show right now. I said, let's talk about it on air. You're like, Riverside, we'll go right now. And right I was like, oh. fucking now. And it didn't happen. You're like, I'm, I can't. I'm like, I'm stoned, dude. I <laughs> <laughs> May have been the best show ever. But yeah, I'm ready to talk about Deadpool, yes. Well, with my memory, I forgot everything. So uh, sorry about that. No, no, this thing, I watched all the screen crush videos on it i mean there must be 10 screen crush videos on this thing so i'm all caught up on all the secrets all the uh but i'll tell you all right so guys if you haven't seen it yet there are some spoilers here I'll, i won't get into the spoilers right away though okay so i'll start off just by saying that this movie was a, a fun movie it was funny there were some hilarious parts to it it was not a movie for itself it was a vehicle to apologize for the shit that Disney has been doing with the multiverse and a way to tie up all the things that came before that were Fox or I guess it was always Fox or maybe some uh, Sony in there. Maybe. Well, but, maybe not Sony, but you know, uh, yeah. Who owned uh, blade? Was that Fox? I think that was Fox too. Yeah. Well, maybe it is all Fox, but anyway, it was more a way to bring them relevance in the current superhero world. But it felt like it could have been Loki season two. Like it wasn't a movie for itself. It had a, a bigger purpose than just being a, a Deadpool movie. The thing I didn't want to say the last show, because it was still pretty early and I'm sure a lot of people hadn't seen it by then, was that the movie to me wasn't a good movie. No. But it was a great spectacle. Everything in it was <laughs> hilarious. But as far as us complaining about how all these movies don't seem to be story driven anymore they're they're not interconnected well like the first 10 years and you know at the end of this movie nothing changed 
not that I was expecting, and this isn't the fault of the movie. It's hype. I was yeah. expecting a lot more. Like the plot of this movie was not a good movie. In fact, the one thing uh, Deadpool looks at a thing on a screen and goes, "Oh, what's that MacGuffin?" Like straight up called it a MacGuffin because it was like, "Oh, I have to go get that thing because that's what we do in superhero movies." Yeah. And I was like, at least he, you know, it's okay that we're doing it because I call out and made it. I broke the fourth wall and made it so self referential. So it's okay to do that now. Yeah, but it was not a great story in and of itself. And that's what I was disappointed about because I wanted to walk away from this going, oh my God, everything's changed. And it just didn't. Didn't no. do a thing like that. No. I said to you last week, the story is the thing that I always come back to to determine whether or not it's a good movie. That's why I can't even give this a, an 80%. Like this has to be like just shy of that. Like it was funny enough. I'd watch it again to pick up on some of the lines that were just throwaway lines that were funny. But uh to that point, what was your uh, favorite standout line of the movie? Uh, there were a few. One was uh, when the, he finally comes up to Wolverine. He's like, you know, you're coming into the Marvel Cinematic Universe at a low point. At a very low point. I'm sorry about this yeah. already. And he's even like, yeah, this multi-timelines thing, it's not really working that well, is it? This uh, multiverse isn't Like, he said that. I was like, oh, my God. They let that through. That's great. He said that the Wizard of Oz got it right back in the 1930s. <laughs> and the gays have known all along. Yeah. We should have listened to that. That's funny. <laughs> For me, the best line of the movie was... Hey, they call me the Merc with the Mouth, not Truthful Timmy, the blowjob boy from Saskatoon. Oh, my God. You remember but when that? am I going to use that in fucking daily life? <laughs> <laughs> How did you walk out with that line memorized? It was the best line of the movie. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so getting into spoiler territory starting now, what did you think of the cameos? This wouldn't have been a movie without cameos. You know, people were talking about, oh, we got to keep these cameos under wraps and we can't let all these. At the first of all, they weren't even cameos. Like th three of the big ones, Blade, Electra, and Gambit, they were supporting roles. Like cameos are like a hearing lock. Stan Lee was a cameo. This, these weren't cameos. These, were, these people were in the movie for a good third of the movie. Really? Yeah. I don't remember them being in it that long. They were in a, an act. There were several acts. They did nothing. They kind of vanished by the end. Like, you see them, and you're like, oh, look, there they are, and then they're done in the movie. They were fighting outside right before they jumped into the portal and went back to Earth-616. <laughs> yeah, but to me, it felt like Doctor Strange. It's like, look, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four surprises, and then they go away. They really don't impact the story. Yeah, but to finish my thought, like, the fact that they couldn't, or the reason that they couldn't divulge or, or spoil who these secret cameo actors were going to be because that was the entire plot of the movie. Everything was a device to get them in front of the next fucking cameo. But I thought the cameos would have more impact. Like we thought maybe Robert Downey Jr. might come back here because this movie is such a big flagship movie that if they're going to do something big like they would do in the Avengers, which is another flagship <laughs> movie, maybe we'll get somebody who actually changes the storyline going forward. Yeah, we got Happy Hogan for about five minutes. For about five minutes. One of the cameos we'll talk about later. We haven't mentioned him yet, so don't bring it up yet. Okay. If you know which one I'm talking about already. I don't. Okay. All right. But as far as cameos, that's kind of it, plus the one I didn't mention. Oh, no, there was a good cameo. Uh, when they had Evans, what's this, Chris Evans? Yes. Come back as... Johnny Storm, but Johnny everybody Storch. thought, oh my God, it's... Or even, even Deadpool thought he was going to say, oh, he's going to say it. Yeah. Avengers Assemble, yeah. and he goes, flame on! He's like, what the fuck? So what was weird about that is as soon as I saw him, I went, oh, this isn't going to be the Johnny Storm gag. They tried to do that in part two. Yeah. So they actually tried when Deadpool was interviewing people to be on the team. The hope was they were going to get Chris Evans to sit down and they go, oh my God, Captain America, you want to be on X-Force? He goes, I'm Johnny Storm. What are you talking about? So they couldn't get him. But they recycled the gag. Yeah. So when I saw it, I was like, I hope they're... And they did the same gag. And I was like, all right. They liked it enough. They, they had to put it in. For me, the best scene in the movie was the opening credits. That was a fun scene. It was a fantastic scene. And then I would say the best post-credits secret scene ever. How come? I just thought that was the best thing. It didn't tie to the next thing. It brought closure to a running gag throughout the movie that Chris Evans really did call... Cassandra Nova. Yeah, all those things. All those horrible, horrible things. Supposedly, they had cue cards for Chris Evans, and he goes, get rid of those cue cards. I can do this verbatim. Watch me go. And he just did it. And it's a great rant. I mean, it's like that. Uh, she can lick my cinnamon hole and kick rocks all the way to bald hell, that fucking cunt. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're amazing. 
You are amazing <laughs> that you can do that. Yeah, it was pretty wow. good. Holy hell. Yeah. It was like the rant from uh, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase at the end. You think if I could rip her apart and piss on both halves, it would still wouldn't bring me the joy or something? Wow. Fucking fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Or if I could... If I could burn her to half to death and then piss on the, the ashy remains, it still wouldn't bring me the joy that it would. Uh, it was a whole fucking rant. One of my favorite meta, super meta jokes is with um, <laughs> it was with Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes showing up as Blade. That I liked. That I liked I a lot. I forgot that Ryan Reynolds was in Blade Three. Right. And they hated each other. They hated on set. On set. Yes. And they made a reference to that. He goes, "I don't like you." He goes, "He never did." Yeah. Yeah, that was the joke. I mean, those kind of things were so meta. Yeah, and that's one thing I got to give the movie. They really, we complain sometimes. Oh, there's too much fan service. That was complete fan service, but in such a deep meta level that not everybody was able to get that joke. There was one thing that I thought was meaning something else. Uh, there was one part where Deadpool introduces Wolverine to somebody, and he goes, he usually doesn't have his shirt on, but he kind of let himself go since the divorce. I thought he meant the divorce from Fox, but he was actually talking about Hugh Jackman actually getting divorced from his old lady. Right. Like, I was like, damn. That made it into the movie. I was surprised about that. What did you think about the Deadpool core? <laughs> so hilarious cameos in there. Like, did you know that Cowboy Deadpool was played by Matthew McConaughey? I did. Uh, not then, but yeah. I didn't know until after the fact. That was funny. The whole big thing about, like, who plays Lady Deadpool, like, who cares? She never took her mask off. It it didn't mean anything. It no. could have been anybody. Yeah, it was disappointing. Very disappointing. All that play up. <laughs> everybody thought, Kid oh. Pool was hilarious. Everybody thought that Lady Deadpool could be, remember we were talking about it, they thought it could be Taylor Swift. Well, no, they were talking about Taylor Swift being Dazzler. Oh, yeah, and Dazzler. the X-Men movie. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They, uh, I read something the other day. They're like, they never even approached her. She no. was never even considered. The one thing that bothered me was, you know, they brought back all the the villains, too, from the Fox X-Men movies. And the guy that played Toad in the original, Ray Park, mm -hmm. the guy that played Darth Maul, mm -hmm. and yeah, that, that wasn't him. They got somebody else to play Toad. I'm pretty sure that was him. That was not him. You sure? I'm sure. That happened a couple times in the The movie. guy that played Juggernaut was not the guy that played Juggernaut. Right, that wasn't Vinny, whatever his name is, Vinny yeah. Jones. yeah. But I think the rest were like they had Kelly Hugh play Death Lady Deathstrike. Lady Deathstrike, yeah. But I don't even think she had a word. Like no. you saw her face for a minute. What do you think she got paid for that? <laughs> I don't even know. Pyro was the same Pyro. I wouldn't have known that. I don't remember Pyro enough to be like, oh, that's the same kid from fifteen years ago. X Men. I, he yeah, grew remember up he now. was in the he was in the mansion, and then Magneto came over and like offered any mutant to come over and join his side, and Pyro left. That was the guy. If I didn't see that on Screen Crush, I wouldn't have known that was the same kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. I tried to avoid all the Screen Crushes for this conversation. Yeah, I know. I watched them all. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, the movie itself, it was all about cameos. The whole thing was just, like, so dependent on cameos. And, again, we bitch about fan service, laid it on too thick. At least these guys did it in a way that was, I don't even know how it was different. It just didn't feel cheesy. It felt fun. But it just wasn't big enough for me. I know I sound like a, an asshole saying I wasn't happy. It wasn't enough. But I just, the hype got me thinking so much more was going to happen. Yeah. And everything we're saying is probably making sense to people that have seen the movie. But for people that haven't seen the movie, I don't know how to break down the plot enough to make it make sense for you. No it idea. It fucked around with the multiverse. It fucked around with the TVA from Loki season one and two, I and guess. two, yeah. Um, it was all over the place. Brought up a concept called anchor beings. But that was the same thing as a nexus being that they brought up in WandaVision. Oh. At least I think it's the same concept. Like Wanda is like the nexus being of all multiverses. That's ah, too much. It is. Just like Deadpool said. Yeah, too much. This too is too fucking much. much. I agree. Well, we're not done. We still got secret wars and other things coming up. Nice pool was funny. Nice pool was very funny. Nice pull was, I was like, what's going on with this fucking, this gag? This guy, I guess Ryan Reynolds needed to show his pretty face somehow. Yeah. But that turned out to be really hysterical. I just thought it was lame how Wolverine and Deadpool just chopped down the Deadpool core. It, they didn't matter. Nothing None of mattered. It mattered. None of it mattered. They all came back to life except for Nicepool. Yeah. Because he doesn't have regeneration. 
Who knew? Yeah. In the commercial, when you see Wolverine and Deadpool jump through the sling ring thing, yeah. I was like, that's where the movie's going to pick up, and then it's going to be like off the fucking hook. But that was like halfway, maybe a little bit later in. Yeah. So when I saw that happen, I was like, we're kind of getting close to the end of the movie. I better lower my expectations here. Okay, not a spoiler for the this movie, but a concept that was brought up in Loki Season 1, Episode 5. I only know that because Deadpool references it in the movie. The Void. They go to the Void, which is the thing at the end of time where everything goes after it is pruned off of the timelines. So if there was like an anomaly or a variant and the TVA comes to prune you away, they blip you into this void, which is, again, this, this place, this desert at the end of time where things go to be forgotten or die. And do you think it was created for this movie or do you think that this movie is something that they just saw that and used that as a place where all non-MCU movies just went to and they wrote that into the script. Yeah, the latter. I think it was already figured out and then it's like, time to write Deadpool. How do we bring this all together? Well, here are some concepts that we have already in the MCU okay. and grab it. Because I thought it was kind of weird to see such a an important part of a small TV show, Loki, become such an important part of a giant MCU flagship movie, Deadpool. Because if you didn't see Loki, and I don't know that everybody saw Loki. No. Nah then you must have been lost. I mean, who are the TVA? What is going on? This guy wants to create a time ripper or whatever he wants to do. And, and he wasn't even like, he was just an idiot. But yeah, he was a weird character too. Whoever Shit he was, was getting turned into spaghetti, which would have made no sense to you had you not seen TV or yeah. uh, the TVA in Loki. Did you think the fact that the Loki season two wrapped up the way it did and the strike delayed the release of the Deadpool movie the fact that Loki is not in this Deadpool movie, do you think that that is a plus or a minus? Uh, I don't know. Like, I thought for sure we were going to see Loki. Thought for sure. And no, no mention of him. I don't even think that... Actually, I think that when this took place was actually before Loki ties everything together. I think I read that. I don't think so. It couldn't have been. No? Because P-57 was a judge in this. And she was only made a judge after Loki sat at the throne at the end of time. No! God damn your memory! P-57? I don't even know who that is. That's the woman. The Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I remember who she was. What's she was the officer. Yeah, she, she kind of got a raise throughout the series. And now she's like a judge. Okay. Because she came in to stand in judgment of this fucking Jamoke that you talked about, the British guy <laughs> that wanted to come in and basically build a time ripper and use a time ripper and then bullshit his way out of it and... Yeah. I read a great theory online that was talking about that he was supposed to represent a Disney executive calling the shots. Huh. And then he came in and kind of fucked things up, and now here comes Marvel Jesus, as Deadpool called himself. Yeah. I read something that I guess there's, if you look real close at one fight scene after a gag, I guess the CGI artist forgot to like put the arm back on or something like that, so there's a quick moment. Deadpool's where... sword goes through Hugh Jackman's arm like it's not even there, like it was bad CGI. Oh. And they're saying, like, some people are fighting online saying, like, oh, this was terrible CGI, and the other thing is just like, no, it happens as he's making fun of CGI being used too much. They think it was a intentional gag. What do you think? I think probably the, the former. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I want to see that scene. I'll judge it for myself, but I totally didn't see that. It's movies. not even that egregious of a scene. Like, we're no. getting really nitpicky as a fan base. Yeah, we always were. I know. I can't say getting. You're right. You're right. So I want to see it again. I mean, the Wolverine and Deadpool scenes together was just great. Loved it all. Loved everything they did together. But it, yeah, the story just wasn't there. And that's what MCU needs. That's why I, was, I left going, well, this ain't going to save, you know, Marvel. The story's still kind of suck the only reason this one did so well is because wolverine and deadpool just work together somehow somehow they work together this isn't shang chi and uh you know uh moon knight you know right <laughs> right it ma really made me miss my honda odyssey oh yeah all of a sudden there was a honda odyssey so i read this that they really used planes trains and automobiles as inspiration so, like, John Candy was Deadpool and Wolverine was Steve Martin. And in that movie, they drive a Honda Odyssey. Really? I don't know if that's true, but that's what I read. So that's why it was a Honda Odyssey. Because otherwise, I was like, what's the Honda Odyssey joke? 
it was just funny. There was a minivan. He worked as a, a car salesman at a used car lot. Yeah. Kind of like a CarMax kind of deal. Yeah. yeah. Drive Max, I think it was called. The last thing I want to say about it that I hated, I hated Peter. I didn't care for Deadpool 2 enough to even remember who the fuck Peter was. Yeah. Me too. I was like, well, Peter again. He, like, he showed up three times in this movie. And I'm like, at one time in a pivotal spot. And <laughs> he I'm like, saved the fucking day. He saved every the day. Deadpool has a Peter. What's a, what's a Peter? A dick? <laughs> <laughs> a Peter. Every Deadpool is a Peter. And it was all a throwaway line because he goes, hey, have fun playing with my Peter. Yeah. As Wolverine and Deadpool, Deadpool Prime, I guess he called himself, walked away. I guess. Well, I just didn't you know, care that much about Peter to think. I thought that was the laziest writing in the movie. Yeah. So I, I just said a little bit ago here that in the movie, Deadpool calls himself Marvel Jesus. Do you think this was enough to resurrect the MCU or get us back on track? No. That's the thing, because it needed to end with something that you'd be interested in for the next movie. It ended with nothing. It set up nothing. Nothing. It tied up old shit. <laughs> Did it hit the reset button that we can go into everything moving forward blank? Yeah. No, because we're going into the new fucking Avengers what? We're not even going into Avengers next. We're going into Captain America. Yeah, Brave New World, which used to be called something different, Brave Something World. It wasn't Brave New World before, but now it's got changed to Brave New World. They had so many reshoots. The thing is over budget, and the trailer still looks like it's a boring movie. Yeah. So, no, not if they keep on making shitty movies. They can make funny movies that don't have great plots, but it's accept it's more acceptable if you have plenty of other movies that have great plots and storylines. Yeah. So in summary, this movie, I mean, if you like Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds, because let's face it, all Deadpool ever was was Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds. If you enjoy that kind of dickhead, smartass comedy the way I do, you're going to have a good time. And it was fun. Jenna enjoyed it, and she didn't know shit about Deadpool. Amy wanted to be here. She's like, if I'm here when you guys talk about Deadpool, I'm coming in. I'm going to defend it. I want to, I'm like, I'm not trashing it. I'm not trashing it. It just, yeah. I'll say this. Speaking of Marvel Jesus, it did beat Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ to be the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Really? It's just north of $850 million right now. Passion of the Christ topped out, I think, at $641 million. So this is the highest grossing R-rated movie ever. It's pretty violent. It, very violent. And I mentioned my favorite scene being the opening credit scene. I did like how they didn't destroy Logan's sacrifice at the end of the Logan movie. Yeah. But they still very comedically brought it up, and he apologized for it in the middle of the opening credit scene. What did he say? I don't remember. Because I remember him saying, we're not going to fuck with he Logan. Was like, look, I don't want to be doing this I, th this is yeah, desecrating a corpse borderline necrophilia uh, yeah. i don't want to be doing this i wish i could just have this guy wh why the fuck is this guy dead yeah. I, now i have to go to find another logan yeah my favorite i don't know why this one just popped in my head but my favorite thing that happened in the movie that got me excited was when you saw wolverine and his blades were up and you saw the the hulk in the blades because blades, it was uh wolverine uh, or, yeah, Wolverine comic book number, like, 146. Yeah. That was fantastic. That was cool. That but was cool. He was like, hey, uh, brown and tan Wolverine suit, you're finally wearing it. Yeah, you, you fought the Hulk in this suit, right? Yeah. And next thing you know, the fucking Hulk's there. <laughs> so good. Smashes him into a tree. Oh, I love the Hulk. I wish they'd bring him back. So seeing a glimpse of Hulk from the Avengers was pretty cool. Like, that was that version of him, too. Yes, yes. But again, just another cameo that was a throwaway after a 30 second, was it even 30 seconds? I don't know. No, it was so quick. But it's just boom, 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 just nonstop moving. Again, not much of a story, but fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the- uh, I would recommend going to see it. And I, w I would see it again, yes. Yeah, I I'm trying to not shit on it because it was funny enough that it's absolutely worth your money. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm yeah. just a little disappointed that it didn't really, the story doesn't matter. Oh, I fucked up. You know what I did? I bought tickets. It was in fucking 3D. Really? You saw it in 3D? I saw it in 3D. I didn't want to see it in 3D. That's still a thing? Yeah. I guess real 3D, which I thought was like the sound, like Dolby. No, it's like real 3D. I was sitting there watching the opening trailers, which we got to talk about that too. And midway through, it's like, oh, now put on your 3D glasses. And I was like, huh? I had to walk back out and grab glasses because they ain't giving me on the way in.
Hmm. So the trailers for the upcoming movies. I don't remember them. There wasn't a single one I want to watch. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. I remember seeing the new Aliens trailer. I'm like, that looks was disgusting. In- yeah, very much. It looks interesting, but it also looks like, I said to Amy, I was like, this is almost like Aliens. So then they're like, Aliens, whatever it's called now. And I'm Romulus. like, oh, well, geez, it is Aliens. It, it is. It looks just different enough to be interesting, but it's still the same old thing. It's Blumhouse. No, is it? I think so. Oh, I hate that guy. Isn't it? I didn't know that. It, it may be. I think it's Blumhouse. No, I did not know. Yeah. We need less Blumhouse. I also saw the newest trailer. I think it's different than the one we saw when we saw Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Borderlands, newest trailer for that. You're right. I've read some shit reviews about this movie. I got a news story on it. (laughs) And you said it's destined to do terrible things. That's my news story. Well, I saw who's putting it out. And when I saw the uh, Lionsgate is putting it out, Lionsgate is like, the LJN rainbow of shit for movies. <laughs> really? What's what? Give me an example. I've never oh, really thought that way about Lionsgate. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I remember when Jenna and I started dating 21 years ago. Today, as a matter of fact, 21 years ago today, we watched a lot of movies, and Lionsgate was almost just like the fucking kiss of death. Really? It I didn't like, know that. It was like the scarlet letter of movies. I never picked that up. Yeah. It's like Canon Films bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had that reaction to it. I never cared for anything with Lionsgate on it. Before we move on, there is one cameo that we didn't talk about, the, the Gambit one. Yeah. What'd you think of that? That one, that's controversial. Some people like it, some people hated it. I could care less about it. I didn't really know how passionate Channing Tatum was to play Gambit and how close he was almost to playing Gambit but I didn't need a Gambit standalone film. You said you didn't know that? No, I did not know that. See, that's one of those meta, meta deep cuts that I knew. So when he showed up, I was like, oh, that's great. But he was a terrible Gambit. He was bad. He was awful. His suit looked bad. His uh, accent was dog shit, but I think that was meant to be dog shit. (laughs) I read a story that Daphne Keene said that his terrible accent made her break character and cause so many reshoots with every scene that Channing Tatum was in. And Ryan Reynolds or Deadpool said, that, who was your dialect coach? Yeah. Uh, the Minions? <laughs> <laughs> Which was fantastic. Was good. But yeah, I just didn't care for him. I was like, all right, it's not a great gambit. No. Electra, I didn't care. Jennifer Garner's a terrible actress. I don't care for Jennifer Garner as an actress at all. She took a shot at Ben Affleck. That was interesting. That was funny. She didn't take a shot as much as she just showed no complete indifference, you know? <laughs> yeah. I did like how they mentioned that there were other variants that came through the void before Deadpool and Wolverine getting there. Like Magneto was there. He's gone. Different Professor X's came through. Now they're gone. So I did find it funny how like maybe Ian McClellan was there at one point. Maybe fucking Sir Patrick Stewart was there at one point. Even the vehicles that they were driving around in the in the in the sand like every one of those cars were something from yeah, a past the, movie or a comic book the fantastic four car yeah yeah there's all kinds of different stuff in there all these breakdown videos have found a lot of stuff but i gotta think that there's still things that we didn't figure out when that movie comes out in hd and streaming i'll bet you we can go back to those screen crushes and those new rock stars and they'll be like 20 more things we just <laughs> found <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But again, the whole thing was based on these Easter eggs, so I hope there's more to find. No T.J. Miller cameo. I didn't expect to see no, that no. <laughs> at all. So that's Deadpool. That's Deadpool. So how about a call back to last show? Last show, we were talking about the Olympics. Right. I'm still watching the Olympics. It's still on. It's still on. Now, Right now, it's a lot of running around in circles and... More ping pong, more synchronized diving. I watched some aerobic swimming this week, which is basically just synchronized swimming. (laughs) America plays silver for the first time ever. They did an underwater moonwalk. (laughs) Wow. How do you do an underwater moonwalk? Well, oddly enough, your feet are above water and you're underwater, but you're moving in a way that it looks like you're doing a moonwalk. 
What? And if they wouldn't have said this is a moonwalk, I wouldn't have known it was a moonwalk. I was, if they did a real moonwalk, I would have liked that. Like you had to put like rocks in your pants to sink you to the bottom to do an actual <laughs> moonwalk. I don't think you can touch the bottom. I think that's actually a penalty. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So last week I did a game where I asked you several off the wall, weird events. And I asked you if they were real events or if they were fake events. Right. And I had mentioned in that segment that back in the 1900s, they had horse long jump and horse high jump. And we joked about a horse flopping over top of the thing. And you said you wanted to see horse pole vaulting. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, we almost got that this week. How so? <laughs> a Frenchman pole vaulting cleared like 10 meters, except for his giant baguette. Oh, <laughs> his, his horse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. His bulge got hung up on the bar. Oh my god, I saw the footage. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And I gotta say, you know, people always talk about how much people are banging it out in those Olympic villages and the IOCs handing out condoms left and right. There's worse things than losing the gold medal by going back to the village every thinking you're hung like a horse. Yeah, I guess there are. I guess there are. I saw I thought it was Ron Jeremy doing the pole ball. <laughs> I did read an article that this gentleman was given an offer by an adult film company. No surprise at all. <laughs> They're so selective as to who they give offers to. I mean, I can't believe this guy got an offer yeah. that quick. <laughs> I heard the uh, girl who did the who did the hawk tour. Like she's like, I'm not doing OnlyFans. I'm not doing porn. Stop offering all those to me. It's like, oh well. Got to strike while the iron's hot. If there was still a Playboy, I'm sure Playboy went would have gone to the hawk tour girl. Absolutely. So you didn't get horse pole vaulting, but you got a guy hung like a horse pole vaulting. Remember the superhero game we played? Oh, yeah. What was it? Uh... The horse hog or something I called him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was definitely horse hog. When does the Olympics end? I think Sunday. All right. So yeah. we have like four more days. I just didn't care enough to even remember it was on to tune in, even after we did a show about it. That's okay. I feel like all the weird stuff, breakdancing hasn't happened yet. So I can't say all the weird stuff happened. Breakdancing still has to happen. I'll tell you what, if you're watching and breakdancing comes on, text me. I'll text you. That I'll watch. I still want to see him dragging their own cardboard. Yeah. I want to see parachute pants. <laughs> the worm. The difficulty of five. Is he going to do it? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's going to be a tenth of a point deduction. He went outside the cardboard. Going to do a backspin. Remember those? Oh, well, yeah. What was the thing when you do this with your arms? The robot? The robot, yeah. Pop and lock? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he didn't get all the rotations on that head spin. That's going to cost him. Oh. Huh? I just want to hear the fucking announcers, man. There was a move I remember called The Suicide by Buddy Cadot. It's like a standing flip where you still land on your back, but safely. Ooh. I don't know how. That sounds horrible. Yeah. And he could do it. He was the only one in town who could do the suicide. Where's your friend now? Bad back. <laughs> He's got a bad back. I don't see him much. He has a walker. Suicide accident. What? What? <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Not what you think. What do you got for the news, man? Well, let me go right to the one that we were just talking about, the Borderlands movie. You had said, <laughs> oh. I heard that it's, you know, not great. I heard that it's projected to not do well. $120 million budget. It's projected to hit about 10 to 20 million. Ooh. Ooh. That is a massive, massive flop. Kevin Costner looking in your direction. He's like, "Woo, get me out of the news. <laughs> Not yet, because Horizon 2 is supposed to come out this month. Is it really? I August, didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Oofa toofa. Yeah, he self-funded that. I don't think Jack Black or Kevin Hart or Jamie Lee Curtis or Kate Blanchett, none of them actually self-funded Borderlands. And we said last week that Borderlands was supposed to come out, I guess, a while ago. It's been, you know, a troubled production. But why did they think this would ever be a good movie? How did they get these big names? Yeah, and everything that I thought made the game a good game, from what I read, they did not bring into this movie. What do you think the point of it was? I don't know. Do people say, listen, we have this Borderlands uh, franchise. It was, you know, semi-popular video game. We got to do more with it. Let's get a director. Let and then somebody goes... Great idea. Who's the person that says great idea? Everybody's happy to make this movie because everybody gets paid. But who thought that this was, who greenlights these things? Whoever saw Super Mario Brothers and thought, wow, video game movies are making a lot of money right now. You think that was it? Yeah, it certainly didn't dissuade anybody from 
shutting it down. You know? I had, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Because it looks like a Guardians of the Galaxy ripoff. Yeah, plus it's R-rated, I believe. Yeah, really? So it's all, you know, not this Deadpool, but other iterations of Deadpool. R-rated movies were making money. I'm rooting for the kid in it. I said that before. The kid with the bunny ears, the one that plays Ahsoka Tano, the kid. And plays uh, young uh, uh, in uh, Avengers. Um, oh, Gamora. young Gamora. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know many kids in Hollywood right now, but that's the only one I know. And that one's got a future if Hollywood sticks around. Well, I don't know. I think we're going to see the biggest bomb since, uh, what, Spider Web, uh, Miss Web, Miss Marvel. Madam Web. I'm mixing them all up. So did they. Yeah. Madam Web didn't make the Deadpool movie. Oh, speaking of Sony and not knowing what the fuck to do with superheroes, one of those trailers I mentioned, a third Venom? Did we yeah. need this? We are Venom. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Ugh. It looks bad. Terrible. I just read something the other day that the leak, you know, Matt, I think they're putting out leaks now just to sort of get people off the scent. Actually, going back to Deadpool, that's something that Ryan Reynolds said, yeah, we did that. Or the producer actually said, yeah, we put a lot of fake news out there to keep people off the you know, the off scent. the trail. Yeah. So that's what people are doing nowadays. Uh, studios are doing. I hate it. Don't do that. So one of the things I just read is that they're finally putting Spider-Man in one of the Sony Venom movies. Yeah. But is it Tom Holland? That was the original plan. They were going to borrow Tom Holland and use him in the MCU and use him in the Sony-verse. I thought Sony's Spider-Man thing was Miles Morales. I mean, that's a Sony animated thing. Yeah. I guess that's different. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Like, you, you end up with, <laughs> they're going to have to have their big movie where all their characters meet. It's going to be Venom, Morbius, Craven the Hunter, and whatever Spider-Man they pick, and Madam Web. Like, holy crap, is that? Who's going to give a shit? I hope they make that movie so that'll be the biggest bomb in the world. <laughs> sounds like a shitstorm. Oh, my God. Who the hell cares? So the second thing I want to bring up, uh, also about Deadpool, it was the one spoiler we didn't talk about. Do you remember the cameo? Oh, the best Wolverine cameo. There you go. You, you know exactly Henry what I was Cavill. saying. Henry Cavill. I didn't get that at all. Cavalrine. Cavalrine. That's what they're calling him. So apparently he was fan casted to play uh, Wolverine. I've never heard that. Yeah, when Logan, well, when Hugh Jackman, rather, after Logan said he was done with the character and wasn't going to come back, people were like predicting who was going to get the role. And Henry Cavill was named as one of them. And he would have been a good one, I think. That was a, a great 15-second clip. Really? I didn't like it. No? No, I was confused. I was like, I'm waiting for big cameos. I'm waiting for Morton Downey Jr., waiting for RDJ. And I get this guy who was in D.C. And I'm like, I don't get it. He did say, oh, great to have you here. Yeah, we ain't going to do you dirty like those dickheads down the street. Yeah, that was a good <laughs> He's line. totally throwing shade at D.C. there. But, yeah, I mean, I think... A big part of this movie was that it wasn't going to be reliant on those big cameos you were looking for. Like, all Deadpool wanted was to matter, which meant he wanted to have his story tie into the MCU, which I guess it does now, kind of, because he saved the timeline through the TVA and everything, but he's not really a part of the MCU as being a, an Avenger. He was denied being an Avenger. Right, he was, yeah. Well, anyway, so Sean Levy, the director of Deadpool and Marvel, he was interviewed. And he said uh, in one of these articles that uh, Henry Cavill was on set for eight hours for that shot. Oh. Eight hours. And he had to smoke so many cigars that he had like he was sick <laughs> by the end of the shoot. He was sick because he had to nail too much cigar smoke. <laughs> it's a uh, 20 second scene. And he had to be there all day and he got sick off cigar smoke. I've gotten sick off cigars. Like you ever, you yeah. know, the first couple we ever smoked, I don't know if you ever got sick, but I would get like pukey sick. <laughs> so I'm just picturing him go, and be trying to just do this so role. How many takes do they possibly have to do? Or was there more to this just didn't make the movie? That's what I want to know. Like, what did he do for eight hours? That's stupid. I mean, even if three hours of it would have been hair and makeup. Five hours to make a 20-second scene? Yeah. No wonder Hollywood's going fucking broke. No wonder. No wonder these things are so expensive. Going over budget? You fucking kidding me? I wonder if he could only do it if he was there for a certain amount of time. Like, are there rules to actors and how much they have to be on set to be able to earn their I could see there being, like, pay minimums. Like, you have to, if he's there for one hour, you have to pay him for at least four hours. I could see something like that. Yeah, if he's going to be in makeup for an hour... 
you have to pay him for at least eight hour a day. I don't think that means he has to be there for an eight hour day and smoke cigars the whole time. How <laughs> fucking dumb would that be? Yeah. Get the first shot of him smoking a cigar because all he did was turn around and look. And you were just leaving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's that was it. his only line. Eight hours of him chopping cigars. And so next time you see that scene, just know that he got really sick after that. And I, I'm going to always see <laughs> Henry Cavill Wolverine puking in the toilet. That's the vision that'll be in my head. <laughs> And I wanted all of you to have that same vision. Ah, shit. You know who's having a bad week? Actually, let's say a bad month. Let's say a bad last couple months. Kevin Costner. Zack Snyder. Oh, what's he up to? From World of Real, Netflix quietly cancels Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead sequels and animated series. Oh, so this is like ash versus the army of the dead kind of shit so this is more he did a remake oh of, there was one with the, you know, the the mom and the the movie that just came out it came out a few years ago it's been years already yeah okay i think it came out during covid holy shit yeah batista in it dave batista yeah okay he wanted to make more of those but apparently the rebel moon thing that he did yeah. bombed so bad that he's now like blacklisted netflix is like we're done with you dude so maybe that was a good thing because Rebel Moon was supposed to originally be a Star Wars story. Maybe it's great that Star Wars walked away from that bullshit. <laughs> I guess because there's supposed to be another Rebel Moon done. Really? It's either filming right now because it was a back to back thing. <laughs> <laughs> we often talk about, you know, these studios going back to back or filming two at one time and the gamble that that is. All right. Let me read you what I got here. So. Things are not going well for Zack Snyder over at Netflix. Here comes word that they've quietly canceled his planned Army of the Dead sequels and animated series. This is from The Wrap, where they announced this. However, hold on, Snyder's producers say the Army of the Dead franchise isn't entirely dead, as there will be a themed experience coming to Six Flags theme parks this Halloween. Oh, part of their Fright Fest? I guess. <laughs> Nobody is going to remember. They're going to look at this and go, oh, and this is what? I don't get it. It's going to be a really cool experience, she says. Who's she? Uh, maybe a producer of some sort. It's not like 2021's Army of the Dead wasn't a success either. It nabbed some great viewing numbers. In its first 28 days on Netflix, Army of the Dead was watched by 75 million households and became the ninth most watched Netflix original movie in the streamer's history. The now canceled sequel also had a title, Planet of the Dead. Snyder's losing streak in 2023 and 24, beginning with release of four Rebel Moon movies. Four? Four of them? Four. I thought there was only two. And I fucking put this story on paper. All right. Where was I? Beginning with the release of four Rebel Moon movies, including two director's cuts. Oh, that's what it was. Ugh. Right, right. They were going to make one and two and then director's cuts for one and two. Oh, so not four movies plus two director's cuts, two movies, two director's cuts, four movies in total. Right. Okay. That's better than what I thought. <laughs> Uh, ba 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 da 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 da. It says Rebel Moon, including two director's cuts released within eight months of each other, has destroyed his stock in the industry. The movies were universally disliked by subscribers and critics. Nobody now will dare put Snyder in charge of another franchise. Yeah, you float too many turds. Nobody's gonna take you seriously, dude. Yeah. What? A, I mean, he had, uh, he had a killer streak for a while there. I was a huge fan of his. I remember he finally put out one. What was it? It was a. There were a bunch of ladies in it. Um, because he did three hundred. He did Army of Darkness, not Army of Darkness. He did one of the like. Uh, why I, I said Army of Darkness because you said Ash earlier. Yeah. He did a uh a, a, a Living Dead movie very early on. He made the zombies run, so he kind of got some fame there. He did uh another movie. He did three hundred. Everybody liked that. He did another movie with a lot of style. He did that that movie with all the women, which name I can't remember any of these fucking. He did Twenty Eight Days Later. Is that no, the one? no, no. That's a, another guy, Boyle. Mm. Oh yeah, you're right. He did Dawn of the Dead in two thousand four. Okay, that was his remake where he made zombies run. That was his remake of George Romero's movie. Yes, he did three hundred in two thousand six. That like was you huge. Everyone loved that. He did Watchmen. How did we forget that, Watchmen? Totally forgot Watchmen. Speaking of big schlongs, you know what? Dr. Manhattan. I know who you're talking about. I have not seen that movie all the way through. One day I'm going to have to go. People have told me the Watchmen TV show is really good. And now I hear they're making another Watchmen something, whether it's an animated thing. I think it's an animated thing. Everybody's into this Watchmen. Sucker Punch, 2011. Sucker, that's that's what the women you That's the one about. I couldn't think. I liked it. And you got into Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. And I hated all of them. Justice League. That's where he went downhill for me. Army of the Dead. 
2021. That's what we're talking that's about. That's what we're talking about that's now. That's the sequel got canceled. That got canceled? Yeah. Since it came out in 2021. Army oh, the these sequel are, the to Army sequels of the Dead. aren't being right, 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 right. And then Rebel Moon was the last thing he put out in 2003. Does it say when the next one's coming? 2004. Rebel Moon Part Two, The Scar Giver. It's over, Johnny. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Johnny. I like this one. Harrison Ford says Red Hulk acting in Captain America <laughs> Four required not caring and being an idiot for money, which I've done before from Variety. Did you read this? I think I sent this to you. Oh, you did? Uh, Maybe. We love Harrison Ford, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So he becomes not abomination. Is he just Red Hulk? What do they call him? I guess Red Hulk. I don't Red know. Hulk, because he plays Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, yep, taking over the president, right? Taking over for William Hurt, who passed away. So he says, uh, being interviewed at Comic-Con, Ford wisecracked about the motion picture process, requiring him to turn into the Red Hulk, saying, what did it take? What did it take? It took not caring. It took being an idiot for money, which I've done before. I don't mean to disparage it. I'm just saying you have to do certain things that your mother would normally not want you to do or your acting coach if you had one. But it's fun, and I enjoyed it. I had a great time and delighted at the response uh, that we got with the trailer. I don't know. I just like that he's like, I just acted like an idiot. Like, yeah. He's not taking it seriously at all. No. He's phoning everything in now. You know, I think Harrison Ford's in the Marlon Brando stage of his career where he's just like, I've made enough money. My name is fucking gold. Everybody loves me. <laughs> but I so still. He's just writing down his lines like on like his leg or on, <laughs> on the extras <laughs> pinned it to his jacket. Yeah. Do you think he takes any of this seriously anymore? You I think he comes prepared at all? I don't know. To go full circle, I hear that. Uh... Ryan Reynolds actually used that in Deadpool. He actually had his lines written down on some something or someone. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Like he one of the scenes he had like his lines like pinned to somebody. He was like reading it. Oh, weird. Yeah. Like who remembers their lines anymore? Yeah. Well, Marlon Brando, he's famous for walking into movies and going like, I don't give a fuck that I'm here. Just <laughs> say the lines into an earpiece and I'll just say them as you say them. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you get old and you're that famous and People want you still in the movies, and you say, yeah, I'll take the bread. Why not? I'll take the do re me. Well, they say when he played Vito Corleone in The Godfather, he was sitting at that desk, and most of the papers on the desk had his lines written on them. Can you see him read it? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he was kind of like looking down and mumbling, and like that was kind of his character, but maybe his character was that because he didn't know his lines. So funny, man. So funny. Harrison Ford is the, absolutely the new Marlon Brando. Just doesn't, just a grumpy old bastard. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> but he's not really, that's the thing. It's an act. He's always had that grumpy act. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people think it's real, but he's a charming person. He's great, but he just comes off like such an asshole. <laughs> that's why I thought this story was worth reading. Oh, man. The Fantastic Four movie is coming out. Yes. The director has cleared up one misconception. Did you read this story? No. He says, the great thing about this is we're building a new universe where there are no other heroes. It's just the Fantastic Four. So this is MCU in a whole new little universe. Because remember, it takes place in the 60s or something. Yeah. So if you're thinking that you're going to see any crossover cameos from MCU, uh, unless they're time traveling, we're not getting any of that. That's an interesting move. They've never done that in the MCU before. That doesn't make any sense. Even if it was taking place in the 60s, Captain America was created in 1940. Other superheroes would have existed. Nerds! Well, he would have been in ice by then. But still, the idea of Captain America being used to sell war bonds for World War II wouldn't have been forgotten. Especially by people working for NASA? Well, I guess it's another fucking multiverse. It's a fucking stretch, man. Hey, Reed Richards. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even thinking about no that. Pun That's intended. a good one. Uh? <laughs> so I don't know. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was them saying, maybe we can do some isolated things. Maybe it doesn't all have to be in the same universe. Let's try that with Fantastic Four. All right. I'm okay with that. That's great. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I like that they're all connected. I just want them to be connected better. You made too many things too fast, and you didn't have time to think through well enough how these things should be. But I don't know. I kind of like that about the MCU. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking back to the comics, though. It's not that all the comics had to tie together. Like Spider-Man might swing in once and again for a Fantastic Four. 
And yeah, okay, now you have Doctor Doom here fighting the Fantastic Four. Then Doctor Doom goes and fights Iron Man for a while. You know, like it, it was people moving, but like they weren't like referencing each other. They didn't have to team up all the fucking time. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably more true to the original comics than not. I know sometimes I think, like, when the first Iron Man came out, I loved it, right? It was just so, it was grounded. Obviously, it was sci-fi. The guy created a suit and could fly, so it's not that grounded. But it was grounded enough. But as 10 years went by and another 10 years went by, you realize that the planet was already full of super beings, and you're seeing the world without any other super beings. But Iron Man was the first one that introduced the world. But right. they didn't even have the super beings at that time. Okay. So other than that, so you're right. I mean, if by that idea, the history of Captain America would have long been known inside that world, but they need to mention Captain America in Iron Man 1. But I do believe there's a scene in Hulk or Captain uh, or uh, Iron Man where they fly over the ice, and if you freeze the film just right, you can see a shield in the ice. Well, the prototype of the shield was in Tony Stark's garage. He used to prop up his thing when he was making the new element yeah. to create his chest thing. What's it called? I like you grabbed your boobs. Uh, bra? Uh, I don't know. Where are we going here? Uh, uh, whatever the fuck that thing's called. The arc reactor. Arc reactor. Which he built in a cave out of scraps. <laughs> that was an improvised line I heard. It's a great line. It's the most memorable thing from that movie. Yeah. The dude. It's the most memorable thing that uh, Jedediah Strange ever put together. What's that his name? Jedediah Strange. Jebediah? Jedediah? Obadiah. Is... Obadiah Strain. Obladi, Oblada. <laughs> Life goes Life on. Life goes on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got a few more stories. Uh, we'll fly through these a little faster. Uh, Tenacious D is not breaking up. Well... It seemed like a nice thing to say when being questioned at Borderlands thing. He said, quote, I love the D. <laughs> <laughs> but when you need to take a break, everybody needs to take a break every now and again. The D will be back. And you left it at that. Yeah, but I want to know. I want to know the conversation after that happened. Well, right after he said it, Kyle Gass was seen for the first time since this event, just walking around the streets of L.A. <laughs> I used to be famous. I said walking around, not living on the streets oh. at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not one of, <laughs> he, he's in one of the, the tents that yeah, are popping up all city, over LA. That's right. Oh, man. Yeah, they just needed a little space. Yeah, I get that. Just thought it was interesting that he, he said that publicly. You know, that's not something you would normally hear. Usually it's like, we're, let's just not say nothing. You know, but he's, just, Jack Black's owning it. He's like, yeah, this happened. Uh, we're just going to breathe for a little while and. See how this all shakes out. How would you answer that, though? At a fan event for Borderlands, somebody says, hey, so what's the future of Tenacious D? What do you say? I'm not here to talk about that, asshole. I'm here to talk <laughs> about Borderlands. I'm here to talk about a thing that I voiced for Robot 10 years ago. Barely remember it. Barely remember it, but I in the contract that said I had to do this. I haven't even seen the finished product. Let me tell you how great the movie is. <laughs> I think it was just pleasantries. I don't feel like this was like any kind of guarantee of Tenacious D coming back. Really? I feel like this is pleasantries. Want to put some money on it? Oh. Hundred bucks. Do you think they come back or not? Oh, no. I think they will. I don't think they're coming back because of this pleasantry. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, all right. I think Tenacious D is the best thing Jack Black and it's definitely the best thing Kyle Gass has going for him, but I think it's one of the biggest fanfare things in Jack Black's career he has going for him. Yeah, but I think it ran its course. I don't think it's making him any more money. Dude, they had a sold-out tour. They had a sold-out tour? It was a sold-out tour. They had to cancel five sold-out remaining shows in Australia. I heard it was at a bowling alley. Not true. It was an outdoor event. It was like a festival. Man. Oh. I don't know. If they came around my town, I'd be like, eh, that's old. That's old school shit. Who'd be like going to see Weird Al? I don't know. See, I would still go see Weird Al, but it, I said going to see Cheech and Chong. On yeah, the go around tour. Yeah, no, it's not the same. I'm just over it. I'm over. I'm over Tenacious D. So I was surprised. I'm thinking everybody's over Tenacious D. I, yeah, I'm surprised I'd, that they're I'd selling still out. Still, be very curious to go see Tenacious D. If they have such an audience, why aren't they putting out more music? 
Dude, Dave Grohl covered Tenacious D at one of their shows down in Houston. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was just grabbing his acoustic to come up. I don't think he planned to play it, but it was a song that he played the devil on in the music video. Yeah. Uh, uh, tribute. A tribute. That's a good He song. played tribute. I do like tribute. And he, he got up and he was just like noodling around like when he switched from electric to acoustic on the stage. Yeah. And he was just like started like playing it. And then he came up and he was like, oh, I thought, bet you thought I was going to play Tenacious D song. And he actually went into it. And he had like an accordion player with him. He started playing with him too. That's funny. But he barely remembered the words it said. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about uh, those videos I sent you today? The epic rap battles? Yeah, man, like, I've seen these before. I feel like it's just a matter of celebrity deathmatch versus, like, celebrity deathmatch meets 8 Mile. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those videos are so good. I've seen them before, too, but lately they're even better. So this was like a CGI Godzilla versus a CGI King Kong, and they're rapping at each other. But then I saw at the end of the video, Catch Us on Stage. They're a band. They're a touring band. This is their music videos. They're not just YouTube, you know, viral oh, videos. Oh, I didn't know that. They're kind of their music videos. So they're kind of... What are they called? They're the the people that make them. This is like gorillas. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I can't remember the name of the the. Ep oh, I think they just call themselves ERB, Epic Rap Battle. So I think the band's called ERB. Really? Yeah, and you can catch them on on tour. So what a creative idea! That's very tenacious D like. My son showed me a Ryan Reynolds versus Hugh Jackman rap battle where they were going back and forth between like who's better, Wolverine or Deadpool. Yeah, that was from The Tonight Show. Oh, is that where it was from? That was weird. It wasn't great. No, it was cringy as all hell. It was. But yeah, that epic rap battle, that had me laughing. Those those jokes were pretty good. And that's it. It's just that's their music video to sell more tickets when they go on tour. I said they're kind of like Tenacious D because Tenacious D had a show. Oh, Remember? yeah. The yeah. HBO show was funny as shit. Well, now you don't need to have HBO. You can make your own content on YouTube to promote your tour. I know there's a few bands that I follow that are like that. They just make their own videos. The videos kind of go viral. And next thing you know, they're fucking selling out shows. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make some videos. Do you hear the video game actors are officially on strike? Really? Yep. This is from The Verge. Video game actors represented by the SAG after union went on strike due to failed negotiations over AI protections. The strike, which began on July 26, 2024, halts new video game projects and affects ongoing ones. The main issue was the disagreement over AI. Oh, oh no shit, because that's what everybody's freaking out we about. We knew this was coming. Specifically how AI should be used with voice and motion performers. The union sought broader protections, but video game companies offered limited terms. The strike echoes a previous one in 2016, which lasted 11 months and resulted in gains for performers. You think this one's going to work out better for the video game industry, or do you think this is going to work like the, the motion picture actors one that we talked yeah. about last week? And when I say we knew this was coming, I didn't mean like the AI being brought in. Like, yes, we knew that was coming. We talked about this strike coming, too. Like The strike's been telestrated months ago. We've really? been talking about this. I can't remember what we talked about last week to remember. Talk. <laughs> There's so many strikes. I mean, the, the yeah. Teamster strike and the actor strike and the writer strike and now the video game voice strike. So, like, what, what happens now? I mean, are we going to get less video games that have actors in them? Or are we going to get less video games? Yeah, they just keep putting out Battlefield and Call of Duty and Fortnite. Everything's <laughs> fucking derivative of the other ones. And so, Madden, all yeah, that. Yeah, it's sports games every fall and spring for football and baseball. Yeah. FIFA comes out. Everything's online gaming now. Where do you think this is? Do you think in 10 years we'll look back and go, remember when actors were pissed off about AI voices? Because AI voices are so fucking easy to use. People are going to use them. Yeah, we'll say that 10 years from now and 20 years from now, we'll say, what's an actor? <laughs> right, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm still watching them YouTube videos made by AI, and I love them. I fucking <laughs> love them. And I know it was just some kid who was able to now make a 20-minute video with an hour of his time because he's got AI video. He's got AI tools that help put the video together. All right. It's great content that I wouldn't have gotten if AI wasn't there. Sure. So- I'm sorry, actors and everybody. Like, I get it. It sucks, but I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't see this going away. I think you're going to lose this one, guys. I think we're going to have less writers. I think we're going to have less actors. We're going to have less uh, voice actors because AI will take jobs. And I don't think this is going to stop it. The times they are changing. I mean, when I'm playing uh, my Escape from Tarkov, right? There's, you know, if you see, uh, maybe a guy sees you and goes, hey. Get that fucker. You know, that's now needs to go through a union, needs to go through an actor. That's something that's so oh, easy. Oh, the voices you hear on that game aren't 
No, they're real people. people you're playing. They're real people. But if AI comes out, I'd be making a game go, well, why would I spend all this money just getting a guy to say, hey, fucker, I'll go to AI and have it say, hey, fucker, for nine ninety five a month. Oh, I thought that was a guy on a microphone. No, they have voices in the game. Oh, I thought that was like a person in your real life saying that over a microphone to you. No, no, in the game. That's it, a game. That can't happen. But yeah, the characters in the game have some, have some voice vocal files that they throw at you. All right. Yeah. Well, whatever. But it's like, you know, that's a perfect use for AI for me. Because you could spend a fortune paying a guy to go, hey, fucker. And then all these people are trying to protect that guy so he doesn't lose his job. Do you remember when they had celebrity voices for Call of Duty in like the bonus levels? No. I only bring this up because when I was looking for a Snoop Dogg line for last week's show for a sound drop, there was an entire soundboard of nothing but Snoop Dogg saying shit about airstrike incoming and we're going to roast them turkeys and shit like that. They brought like Snoop Dogg and they brought like four other celebrities into Call of Duty and paid them money to record lines to use in like death matches. Well, I just read that one of these AI things are using actual celebrity voices. They're testing that out. And there was a picture of Snoop Dogg. That's where I thought you were going. Oh, no, I didn't know. So it's like even some of the celebrities are like, go ahead and use my voice for letting people getting paid. use my content. My, yeah, let people use the Snoop Dogg voice in their shit. But then you got other people saying, no, no AI anything. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you can't do that. It's not going to stop it. Everybody's going to do it anyway. That's, how, that's my prediction. Yeah, that seems to be the way it's going. Learn to use the dark side of the force. And then, you know, there'll be fines and people get sued. And then eventually they're just going to give up. And they're going to stop suing the, the companies that are doing AI. And it's just, it's just going to overtake. Yeah, you might as well just get money for giving permission. Yeah. They tried this with Napster. They tried it when books started to go to, like, audiobooks. They always try to stop this stuff because it does take people's money out of their pockets. But, again, that's just the way life goes. And they call it progress. And they call it progress. Like, I don't know what this, I don't know who to feel bad for. I, I really struggle with this because it's like, it, on the one hand, it allows better content to be made. On the other hand, it takes jobs from humans, but better content is important. Here's my thing. Are there people whose voices are more entertaining to listen to than mine? Yes. If they recorded those sounds for a lot of money and I recorded those lines for a lot less money, would my recordings sell fewer games? People aren't buying those games because of the voices that are fucking tied into it. Fucking exactly. Fucking exactly. So AI that shit. Well, I don't know. We'll see how all that shakes out. What about Vince Vaughn? You haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah, I like Vince Vaughn. I do too. And I was thinking about him recently. Like he did all the dirty movies, all the funny, dirty movies. And then you just don't see him around anymore. I... Just watched him on Hot Ones on YouTube with with uh, Sean Evans eating the hot wings. Yeah. And that's where I saw this article I sent you. Okay. By the way, uh, Hugh Jackman and uh, let me just say Wolverine and Deadpool because now they're, that's who they are. Yeah. Wolverine and Deadpool just did a, an I episode of that. It. Oh, that was so funny. I watched that it. Was that really was good. good. Really good. I don't know if it was as funny as the Conan O'Brien one, but it was awfully fucking funny. It wasn't as good as Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah, he had a good one. All right, Vince Vaughn says R-rated comedies aren't made anymore because the people in charge don't want to get fired. They overthink it, he says. Vince Vaughn has expressed concerns that studios are no longer making R-rated comedies like they used to. He believes this is due to overthinking and a shift in focus towards safer, more marketable content that avoids taking risks. Toxic Avenger, maybe, is an example of that. Yeah. Vaughn argues that this trend limits the creative freedom and edginess that made many past comedy successful and beloved. And when you sent that story over, I thought, but I can tell you a movie that's very edgy and very dirty, and Disney made it. It's called Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine. So I don't know if this story came out based on what he said while on Hot Ones, or if Sean Evans asked him questions based on this article. But he was talking about how Somewhere along the lines, this formula got put into place where somebody at the top said, oh, you have to have an intellectual property tied with a movie in order for it to be you know, popular or to make money or be successful. And he threw out that, well, if you go back, you look at John Hughes movies, the intellectual property was a girl going to prom or kids having to do Saturday detention or like shared life skills. And he said, nowadays, they look at intellectual property and it's like, Oh, the movie fucking Battleship 
was made into a movie. Not a good movie, but now there's formulas out there that like, oh, well, this studio did a battleship movie and they put in Brianna and they put in these other people in this battleship movie. Now we're going to come out with a movie based on the, the, the game Payday. And then Payday is going to fucking bomb because it never should have a movie made out about it anyway. But then the studio exec says, well, you know, I was following the formula. You can't fire me. I tried. I tried what people were doing, but nobody's taking a risk. Everybody's trying to play it safe and not get fired rather than make some waves and maybe make some good art. So I think a lot of people think if we do anything that's offensive, we're going to get canceled. I guess. But I'm hoping that Deadpool and some of these raunchy comedies that I've seen kind of hidden, like there was one I saw not too long ago, Nikki Stadicki or something with a... Oh, Nikki Stadicki. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that was kind of raunchy. I was like, all right, we're getting back to raunchy comedies. I like raunchy comedies. I grew up on raunchy comedies. I want them back. Yeah. <laughs> I want them back. Yeah, I agree. Oh, Smokey and the Bandit, I was about to say, I forgot a fuck up -ery. A oh. late in the show fuck up -ery just came to me. Hold on, let me pull it up. Hold on. Because if I don't, Sister Michelle will go nuts. She sent an email. I caught this fuck up re last episode. I was not going to edit it. I wasn't going to like try to make myself look good. I just let it fly. I didn't even put the uh, the Family Feud buzzer on it like I do yeah. sometimes. Because yeah. I was like, let's see who gets it. Michelle got it right away. The problem is Michelle's not very good at writing emails. Uh, All right. Okay. So you got to try to figure out what Michelle said. It's a game. Surprise game. What did Sister Michelle say? Surprise fuck up re game? Yeah. I think you got your signals crossed, Bill or Scott, accidentally said cannonball, then conversation went to remember that. I have no idea what she means. And then you described Sally Field, but she was in Smokey and the Bandit, and the third movie from that series, Jerry Reed, was in. Cannonball Run had Dom DeLuise, and the third movie from that series changed name to Speed Zone. Burt Reynolds opted out of both of the third installments. Okay, so what she's saying is I was saying... Whoa, that was... Yeah. So Smokey and the Bandit and Cannonball Run were different things. Different things. And oh, I mixed I them think, up. I, I did too. Yeah, I would have. I, I mixed them up last week. So I was like, wasn't Jackie Chan in... Uh, that was Cannonball. And I think he was in Smokey and the Bandit or vice versa or whatever. Okay. Oh, he was in Cannonball. He was in Cannonball Run. But I was saying, wasn't he in Smokey and the Bandit? Yeah. So yeah. I said no. And you're like, I think he was. I'm like, no. Well. Yeah. Those movies really do run together for me. Sure. And they made a third Smokey and the Bandit. That was with Jerry Reed. Okay. Yes. Who had a basically in movie concert in Smoking the Bandit too? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so there was uh, Michelle's right. I had to look it up once I figured out what she was writing here, and don't think I didn't ask AI to help <laughs> decipher. Yeah, that. I really you, you I need really AI did. Rosetta Stone <laughs> to help decipher that email. Sister Michelle in her own language. <laughs> She's like my mom. When my mom texts, nobody knows what the hell my mom's asking. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh third cannonball run was called speed zone i don't know i never even heard of speed zone i didn't know there was a third cannonball run all right well there was our fuck up really late in the show sorry michelle usually sorry to mention you so late all right my last story did you know the show scrubs yeah did you like the show scrubs yeah i did i think it was on for like eight or nine seasons yeah love the show would you want to see it again well they're coming out with a new NBC show about a hospital. I don't know if it's Scrubs, but very similar. Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence, who made that uh, show that I was watching not too long ago with Harrison Ford called um, uh, Shrinking. Yes. Great show. Highly, highly recommended. The Apple Plus show. Hysterical. Yeah. Uh, Siegel is in it. What's his name? Not Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. Such a funny show. So Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence confirms plans for the sitcom to return to TV. Airing from 2001 to 2010 across nine seasons, the sitcom follows a group of friends as they progress through their medical internship, learning important life and career lessons as they become fully-fledged and experienced medical professionals. While Scrubs stood out for its slapstick humor and surrealist daydream sequences of the cast's inner thoughts, the series also had a heart and sincerity that tackled medical struggles respectfully. So the show, I don't think a lot of people liked it. Really? I, I just don't remember anybody talking about it. And I remember watching it thinking this show is one of the best shows on TV and nobody talks about this show. Wasn't it canceled from network and then Comedy Central picked it up? Or yeah. Did Comedy Central just pick it up in syndication? I don't know. I don't remember. But Zach Braff, I mean, I thought he had a great lead role in that. Yeah. Oh, it was so well written. It yeah. was super funny. It's one of the shows that I say to people. It's like uh, Freaks and Geeks. It's like uh, 
Oh, was the one I was just watching not too long ago. Damn it. Flew right out of my head. But it's one of those shows that really is good, but it flew under the radar. Community is what I was going to say. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Like, it's got its fans. It's got its diehard fans. But I'm just surprised that not a lot more people know about Scrubs. Yeah. I didn't know Scrubs itself was coming back, but I mentioned last week how the Olympics, everything with the Olympics being on NBC, everything's a fucking vehicle for the next NBC project. So all their commercials are like new NBC shows coming out. Well, that and nothing but fucking nonstop political smear campaigns. But there's a new show coming out based on an ER. And it, I was like, oh, look, it's a knockoff of Scrubs. Hmm. But now the real deal's coming back. Not I had no deals. idea. Yeah. I, that trend worries me. I mean, it's been that way since like the 80s, bringing back something. And we just talked about it. Like, here, well, I got this property. Let's make a movie. It's Beverly Hillbillies. What do we do with it? I don't know. Let's try a movie. Hey, it worked. Let's make... You know, I dream of genie. Let's make uh, Green Acres, you know, and it just goes fucking crazy. So now it seems that they're trying to revive a lot of old 80s stuff, right? We talk about it yeah. on this show, but there's old like 80s and 90s stuff, like a different world. Do you remember that show? Yeah. That's getting. That was a spin off of the Cosby show. That's getting uh, uh, an updated. Really? Like who's looking for that? I guess it's got fans, but then, you know, half the time they put these things out, you go, huh, it never had any fans, huh? Is Sinbad going to be an RA? Oh, geez. Is he still alive? Sinbad? Yeah. I think so. He, he wasn't doing well for a while. Now I'm concerned. Oh, he, this just become an obit? It might be. You know who we didn't talk about? Shannon Doherty dying. Yeah. It just happened in so fast that we can't keep up. It is fucking nonstop. You're right. Yeah, we're getting to that age. Sinbad's still alive. Is he? He was born in 1956, but he's still kicking. He's not doing well. Like ghoul pool? <laughs> he'd be a pick for the ghoul pool, unfortunately. Poor Sinbad. Amy loved Sinbad. Amy took me to a Sinbad stand up show not too long ago. Like he played in Philly. You were pleasantly surprised. I was hysterical the entire time. I was laughing, crying. He was, and he had no script. He just came out and improvised. And he was the funniest fucking guy ever. Uh, I was totally surprised. Do you like a big color block jacket? <laughs> he wore what he wore in a different world. Really? He wore his Kazam outfit. That's what he wore. <laughs> no such thing. What was he in? No, wasn't that? He, he was Shaquille, a, people remember Shaquille O'Neal in a movie called Shazam? Yeah. But it never happened. It was actually Sinbad that played the genie. That's that whole... Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> the, the, the Mandela effect. Wait, so Kazam had Sinbad. It did. Okay. It really did, yeah. Because all of a sudden I was like, wait, wait, wait. That was, that was Shaquille. Yeah. No, it was Sinbad. It was Sinbad. What was he in? He was in that. He was in uh, Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. And he was in this thing we're talking about. the uh, Different world. Different world. And Dwayne Wayne. Yeah, Dwayne Wayne and Lisa Bonet for like Lisa a season. Bonet for a second. Yeah. Well, everything old is coming back. And I don't know that it's good, but somebody's got the license. Somebody paid to keep the license. And now they're just like, I better find a way to. Squeeze some money out of this stone. But what if the new different world is going to be like Deadpool? He's going to come back and apologize for Bill Cosby and all the dirty things he did that people didn't know about and just break the fourth wall. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> That'd be good. Maybe this Deadpool trend will like leak into all pop culture coming pop out for the culture. next couple of years. This is content. This is what entertainment has become. Just apology after apology. Tongue in cheek. Breaking the fourth wall. I'd like it. I'd be all about it. It would wear thin. That's drama. I like drama. <laughs> As we've well established on this show, <laughs> yes, you do. Well, that was everything, buddy. Well, that's it, man. That's the end of the show. End of the news, end of the show. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week. Scraps!